All right, what I want to show you today is the classic physics 2D projectile problem. And I want to show why mathematically they hit. So you have a hunter or a projectile is pointing straight at a monkey and a monkey on a branch. And the, they're both going to start their motions at the same time. So when the hunter um, shoots his arrow or bullet, the monkey gets scared. So let's go. And they're going to fall at the same rate and collide together. So no matter how close or how far the monkey is, it's going to work. No matter how high and how low, it's still going to work. As long as the monkey lets go of the branch the same time the projectile is shot, it's going to work. And I want to show mathematically why. So here we have uh, a projectile. And it's being shot at. So let's say this is V theta, and this is the angle that it's going to be shot at. And it's shot at a monkey up here. And the monkey is going to drop when it hears, or she hears, the shot. So one condition that has to be true is the projectile has to be pointed at the monkey. Um, and the other one is that the monkey is going to drop at the same time the projectile is fired. So the monkey is going to fall down this way. And the projectiles are going to follow it. So if the projectile is shot, it's going to go curve at the same rate and hit the monkey. Now, conceptually, it makes sense. The bullet should be here. That's the goal. So if there was no gravity, the bullet, by the time it travels here, should be up here because you're pointing directly at it. Now, so imagine the bullet should be here, but if gravity's pulling on it, it's pulling at it from here to here. So it's going to drop this much. And that drops the same amount as the monkey. So it should hit no matter what. But like I said, I want to show it mathematically. A couple of things I want to label is that for the blue or the projectile, this is going to, we're going to call dx. And we're going to call this dy of the bullet or projectile. And then for the monkey side, I'm going to call this dy of the monkey. And then one side note is I'm going to call this whole thing h. This is where the monkey is on top of the tree. So we're going to try to solve this and show how we can make them all alike. Um, so in order to do that, I'm going to pick, um, I'm going to kind of spell out all the variables and then come back to it. So first, let's do the, the projectile part. So we have vi, vf, a, t, d. Then we have d, um, v, t for the horizontal part. So for the projectile, you have two sets of data or two sets of variables. One is vertical and one is horizontal. Now, for the monkey, we have it just going up and down. So it's just vi, vf, a, t, d. Now, I purposely left everything vague and I didn't label it because I want to see what's the same in all three different situations. So remember, this is technically the projectile, but it's broken up into its components. This is just the monkey. The monkey isn't doing anything else but falling down. So let's kind of put in things that we know are true um, and then if it's related, what are they? So first thing is, since the monkey's dropping, this is zero. Makes life easier because then we only have one VI, which we're going to keep that way. This D, we're going to label D um, Y of the monkey. And then this we could just label as um, negative G for gravity. And let's look over here. This one we labeled as DX. Um, this one is technically V theta cosine theta, and this technically is V theta sine theta. So if I need to be more specific, then I'll do that. But right here, there's only one VC, so we could keep it that way. And because this VI is zero, we could just use VI, just to make it easier, because I don't want to write out V theta sine theta like 20 times. Um, acceleration here is also negative G, or negative 9.8. And the dy, or sorry, d is going to be called dyb. That's what we labeled it over here. Um, so that's what we have. One thing that we don't care about is final velocity. And the reason is because we don't really care how fast the projectile is moving or how fast the monkey is moving. All we want to know is that this height is equal to um, or how much the monkey dropped, or h minus dym. That's what we really want to know. Are the projectile and the monkey going to be at the same place at the same time? All right. 
So now we have one, two, three. All the t's are the same because that's what's connecting them. So this t is equal to this t, which is equal to this t. And like I said, all three things must hit the monkey in order for it to work. So these are all the t's are the same. All right, let's do this. Um, let's simplify it to make life a little bit easier or plug it into equations. Here we have d equals v i t plus one half a t squared. Plug in all the variables that we have. Um, D, we're going to label D, Y, B. V, I, we're going to keep that way just because it's easier to write it down. And then we put negative G, T squared. Then we have D, Y, B equals V, I, T minus one half G, T squared. Now, not very helpful. I still have too many variables. I have D, Y, B, V, I, and I have T. So it's just a lot. So I'm going to see if I can shorten it by using this one. So remember, this is D equals VCT. Plug everything else. DX is equal to VC times T. I'm going to solve for T. So I have DX over VC equals T. All right. And I'm going to plug it into just this one right here. So I have DYB is equal to VI times dx over vc minus one half gt squared. Now, it will make more sense once we start doing this side. On this side, same equation because we have everything but vf. So d is equal to vit plus one half at squared. Plug in what we know, dym equals um, one half negative gt squared. This is zero, so this becomes zero. All right, so now we have that, and they don't look alike. These two, we want to make them look alike. So there's one more kind of relationship that we have. Notice that this height plus this height equals this height, or this length. So what we want to do is dyb absolute value plus absolute value of dym is going to equal to h. So we want the absolute value of it. I'm going to move um, this to the other side. So the absolute value of dym is equal to h minus dyb. Now from this equation, dyb is always going to be positive, so we're not going to worry about it. Here, dym is actually negative, because remember, here's the starting point, here's the final point. So we want to put a negative somewhere to kind of cancel it out, because the answer is going to be negative, so we want to get rid of it. So to get rid of it, you just put a negative in front of it. So D, negative DYM is equal to H minus DYB. And I'm just going to multiply everything by negative because I want to make it positive. So it'll be DYM is equal to negative H minus DYB. Okay, so that's the relationship here. And look, I could now substitute this into here. So I have negative H minus D. Oh, this becomes a plus. Let's see, let me make sure. If I make this a negative, and I want to distribute minus negative. Yep, it's going to be plus. So um, h minus dyb equals negative h plus. I messed up, sorry. One half negative g t squared. There we go. I'm going to move oh, this one's positive. I'm messing up. Okay, then move this one over. So you have dyb is equal to h minus one half g t squared. Now, um, I messed up right here. This is a positive right here. So when I substitute, it should be negative plus dyb. Okay, I think I'm all good with signs. So now dyb equals h minus one half g t squared. So it looks so close now. dyb, this is the only entity that's the wrong one, one half gtf, gt squared. I have one more trick up my sleeve. Here is a right triangle. 
This is h and this is d and x. They're both lengths, so we can compare them. So tangent of theta is equal to opposite h over hypot or not hypotenuse adjacent dx. So we have that one. There's actually another relationship with that same theta. That is v theta over here. So that means this is vi and this is vc. So tangent is equal to vi over vc. Now you go, hey, look, they're both equal to tangent. We're going to make them equal to each other. So h over dx is equal to vi over vc. And then you go, hey, I want it dx over vc. So I'm going to cross multiply. So dx vi equals hvc. And I want dx divided by vc. So I'm going to divide both sides by vc. And I want to divide both sides by vi. So now the vi's cancel on this side, vc's cancel on this side, and you're left with dx over vc equals um, h over vi, and you plug that in. So dyb equals vi, and then you do this entity, h over vi minus 1 half gt squared. The vi's disappear, and you're left with this. D Displacement in the y direction of the bullet is equal to h minus 1 half gt squared. And you go, wow, look at that. These two are the same. 